Hey all, Zach here. Now I know we've already talked quite a bit about the new Powerwall 3 from Tesla, but I wanted to cover this here. What are the actual changes that we've seen from the previous generation Powerwall 2 to the new generation Powerwall 3? Now the Powerwall 2 is a very successful residential battery from Tesla. It was popular for both new installs, the retrofit installs. Since it was AC coupled, it meant it was inverter agnostic. It could be paired with any solar inverter, Tesla's, Enphase, Solar Edge. Didn't matter who you had, the Powerwall 2 was compatible. Now while some of the major specs like capacity at 13 and a half kilowatt hours and warranty term at 10 years remains unchanged, there are significant upgrades we need to discuss. I wanted to highlight these five key changes with the fifth being one that has not been talked about quite as much as your normal stats, specs, performance metrics, all of that. So you got to stick around and find out that fifth and final change. So starting off with number one, we have power. We've seen a huge power bump on the continuous output, which the Powerwall 3 is now at 11 and a half kilowatts, which is really beneficial for backing up more loads with just a single battery unit. For comparison, the Powerwall 2 offered just a five kilowatt continuous output. So since we've seen 130% power increase, this will really help us in backing up those heavier appliances like dryer, EV charger, pool pump, and of course your AC units. Now with the AC unit, we need to follow a different metric for compatibility and that's locked rotor amps or LRA. This is basically your startup power required to turn over your AC's compressor. We see a 75% percent increase here on its load start capability an LRA of 185 is what it's rated for and this is going to be enough for a five ton AC unit and it's important to note here if you have multiple AC units you got to combine the LRA of all of the units and it has to be under 185 if it's over you would need to expand your power output by adding a second power wall three but in most cases, no longer do we need multiple batteries to offer whole home backup, which was a standard for the Powerwall 2. Additionally, since the backup switch can only be used when we're backing up every single load in your house, including that AC unit, we are now able to see a larger percent of projects that are backup switch compatible when comparing the Powerwall 3 to the previous generations. Now, why is this important? More power is more power, which is good to have, but it creates an easier path to a more affordable installation. So 130% more power, 75% more load start capability, backup switch enabled, more whole home backups with just a single battery. Point number two, battery chemistry. Powerwall 2 used lithium ion NMC chemistry, which for some reason gets regarded as this unsafe chemistry, like you have a massive bomb in your garage or something. Battery management systems, thermal management systems, quality testing, these all play a role and making safety a priority. I mean, I have 180 kilowatt hours of grade A lithium ion in my garage. Nothing bad's happened to me yet. Now, Powerwall 3 has seen an upgrade here to LFP or lithium iron phosphate. Now, Tesla hasn't openly confirmed the battery chemistry on any spec sheet, but it has been confirmed through Tesla reps. Advantages of this battery chemistry are safety and durability. They can really endure more wear and tear without seeing those high levels of degradation. And realistically, calendar aging is gonna degrade these batteries more than just using them. Tesla's warranty covers unlimited cycling. So just use your battery, that's what you got it for. LFP has become the new standard for residential batteries, Tesla now joins the party. Rolling into number three, ease of storage expansion. Most homes do not require the power of two or more Powerwall 3s. Since the output is so high at 11 and a half kilowatts, it's more than enough for most situations. But some homes want more than 13 and a half kilowatt hours of storage capacity, especially in markets that have longer on-peak hours, more frequent outages, or whatever it might be. Referring back to Powerwall 2 and its lower power output, most homes wanted two plus batteries to not only get that additional energy capacity, but to also get more power and achieve whole home backup. For those keeping track at home, a single Powerwall 3 still outputs more power than two of the Powerwall 2s. So with this Powerwall 3, Tesla has put together a more cost-effective way to expand storage with an easier installation method and less components. Power is already there with one unit. We just want more capacity. So what they have rolled out is their DC expansion packs. These DC packs are the same Powerwall 3, just without the expensive power components like the inverter system. Each DC pack adds another 13 and a half kilowatt hours of energy storage, but no additional power. Metaphorically speaking, you're essentially increasing your fuel tank size, but not increasing 
using any of the car's horsepower. It's a much easier installation. There's less wiring and since it doesn't output power, it doesn't require a breaker. So there's more electrical costs saved there. You're literally popping in a connector, mounting it to the wall and you're done. Now you've just increased your storage at a much lower cost point than options of the past by cutting out components, labor, complexity of installation, things like that. This will really make the idea of two or more batteries more attractive from day one, but also allow you to go into the project with the plan of starting with one unit and then expand as your system needs increase or the budget allows. You can add up to three of these packs to a single Powerwall 3, giving you a total of four units. Now, point number four is the integrated hybrid inverter. Let's go with the obvious one. Powerwall 3, inverters inside of the entire assembly, laser welded shut, flood resistant, all that cool stuff. Now, this doesn't just mean there's one less piece of equipment to install on the property. You have to remember the Powerwall 2 did not have an integrated inverter, so it required a separate inverter, therefore added an inverter cost for your solar project. So whether that was Enphase, Tesla, Solar Edge, whoever, you had to pay for that additional inverter. Some people really like that you can match your preferred inverter with your Powerwall, which you can still do with the Powerwall 3, but the fact the inverter is already there, it makes it a little redundant. The changes from a separate inverter to an integrated inverter really helps streamline everything, and it starts to push that ideology that a battery system is as important to the entire solar energy plan as the inverter is. Now, Powerwall 3's inverter is a string inverter, which is going to drive the micro inverter fans absolutely nuts, but my experience is that most roofs with good sun exposure and relatively simple layouts are ideal for string inverters and statistically they do outperform micro inverters in these situations historically micro inverters and optimized solutions have been the go-to in somewhat shaded environments or situations with a range of different roof directions but the powerwall 3 does offer six mppts or powerpoint trackers to really help optimize the entire system and create more flexibility now with that sizing of 11 and a half kilowatts on the inverter with the powerwall 3 you can really oversize this inverter with solar input tesla allows up to 20 kilowatts of solar input on a single inverter so when compared to the powerwall 2 this will more than double your solar capacity with just one battery the advantages you see here are going to be more solar if your situation needs it without the power requirement of that second battery but it's also going to create the opportunity to expand your system size down the road with more solar or possibly add one of those dc expansion packs it's really helpful that the system is naturally built with expansion in mind from day one there's no need to come back upsize your inverter or anything if you do want to add more panels so one of the more common questions i get hey what happens if i want to add more panels if i want to add another battery whatever the case might be and it's cool to see that the powerwall three and the components that come with it really enable this strategy right out of the gate. Now, point number five, the Powerwall three is natively a DC coupled solution. The Powerwall two was an AC coupled solution. And when we say AC or DC coupled, what we mean is basically what form is this energy when it reaches the battery? Is it in alternating current or is it in direct current? So what's the difference? And really, why does this even matter? Here's my simple answer. One, DC coupled systems offer a higher overall efficiency by a few percent due to less overall conversions of energy from DC to AC or vice versa. Two, DC coupled systems can naturally charge their battery on clipped energy that would have otherwise been wasted generation during peak times a day in an AC coupled solution. Now here's the why. DC coupled solutions naturally more efficient. Batteries natively store power in DC form. Solar panels natively generate power in DC form. So the battery is being directly fed by the DC power that the solar panels generated. There's no wasted conversion here. AC coupled solutions are more flexible for retrofit installs because we could simply install the battery downstream from your existing inverter and we just charge the battery this way but it becomes less efficient because they have the wasted conversions of power. AC coupled solutions have three power conversions whereas DC coupled designs only have one. It goes from DC off the roof, converts into AC at the inverter, then it converts back to DC when it hits the battery inverter and once you need that energy for the home it's going to convert back again from that DC battery power into alternating current AC power, which is what our homes consume. It's super confusing, but you get the idea. Also, just a sidebar, Powerwall 3 can be AC coupled as well, allowing for this ease of installation on retrofits. All it is is a software change. It's not a different battery. So you have the best of both worlds here. Now, as far as the difference in regards to clipping, it's very common for roofs that do get a lot of direct sun exposure to naturally have periods of day and year to experience this. Clipping occurs when the power output of the solar panels exceed the maximum input capacity 
of the inverter. So if you have too much DC power coming in at any given time for the inverter to handle, this is gonna result in energy being clipped or not utilized and it's essentially wasted. Easy way to think of this is like spillage. There's more water coming into the bucket than the bucket could handle. Now in a DC coupled solution, that energy reaches the battery first before the inverter. So it's not lost, rather it's directly stored into the battery. This allows for a more effective design, but it also allows us to oversize the system more aggressively than in an AC coupled solution. Essentially, it gives us more room for expansion. The Tesla inverter is already pretty large at 11 and a half kilowatts, but this is part of the reason why Tesla rates it up to 20 kilowatts of DC power input, because this natural feature of these DC coupled solutions. So to recap it here, when we look at the Powerwall 2 and now the Powerwall 3, Tesla has really created a more powerful and more efficient battery and inverter system with a safer and more durable chemistry and a lot more system flexibility. The Powerwall 2 was a great product. We installed a bunch of them, but it's really impressive to see the gaps they covered with this new third generation Powerwall offering. If you're curious to see how the Powerwall 3 stacks up against a competitor like Enphase and their flagship battery, click on the video here on the screen. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.